Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome to Babble with Bronies. As usual, I am your host. I am Everlasting Joy, along with my good co-workers, Twilight is Magic and Mr. Ben. You ready to start the show? <sighs> okay. We don't have a lot this week, and I'm actually, I'm actually kind of happy about that, because you know, for all the, um, for all of the, uh, for the past few many weeks, actually, we've had nothing but um, a dump load of content. So it's going to be kind of nice to just keep things nice and quiet for once. <clears throat> Anyway, I'll remind you, there will most likely be lag um, spikes and whatnot, so bear with us as we, um, we uh, work around those. Anyway, let's get started with the big announcements, shall we? First of all, we would like to wish Moonview a happy birthday. Uh, Moonview's birthday was on the 1st of June, yesterday. So, big congratulations to you, Moonview. <laughs> Rain Shadow. It is everything is working and good. Good, good, good. Now, um I have a question for you guys, actually, before um before I anything else. First of all, I do want to say that um there will be no Babble with Bronies on the um sixteenth of June of this month, the 16th, for various reasons, one of them being I have some personal things I wish to iron out, but um, but when I give these announcements about whether we're going to be doing, um, if, we're, uh, if some Sunday is not going to have an, an episode of BWB, do you guys like it if I do this two-week deal or just notify you one week beforehand? Which do you guys prefer? Mr. Ben. Okay. One week, one week, one week. Y'all like one week. I question this because you'd be amazed how often I get um I get people asking if it's you know, when I do the two week deal they ask, you know, is it next week that we're on, or is it next week that we're off? So, um, so that's that's why I ask. I'm just I'm just going for efficiency here, people. That's all I'm asking for. Don't worry about it, daring derpy. Okay, so y'all like the one week deal. Well, anyway, since I already spilled the beans, I'll just say it anyway. No BWB on the 16th. That's Father's Day weekend here in America for all of those who in America. Otherwise, for those of you who don't celebrate Father's Day on the 16th, it's the 16th of June. <laughs> all right. I'm saving that for later. Something I do wish to bring up, though, early this week, early enough this week, we got our... Um, official YouTube channel up, as in, I know I already advertised this to you guys, but it's worth mentioning because we have every episode up. Every episode that isn't on vocal, I'll say that. I don't think I'm ever going to get vocal um, up, or at least I'm not going to be able to download those videos and put them on their own separate deal. But um, regardless, episodes 5 through 47 are up on there right now. And we'll get 48 up there um, when this one's done with. <laughs> Subscribe, you'll see all the videos, you can check out all our past things, see where we've been, see what we've done. Heck, just for poops and giggles, you can check out my interview with Dusty Cat there. If... But those were our early days, Mr. Ben.
So it's kind of hard to say, you know. Um, so it's hard to say they were supposed to be good. The Discord episode was after the move, Mr. Ben. So, um... So, um... But yeah, Mac Hard was completely vocals, um, doing. <laughs> oh, mercy. And in news, in the news category, all we have is just the typical brony state, um... The typical Brony State announcement. A movie is Forrest Gump. Pony 1 is Magical Mystery Cure. The B movie is Cayman Rider the First. And Pony 2 is Keep Calm and Flutter On. So I hope to see you here this Friday. That would be the... Let's see. Nine, seventh. The 7th of June. On... Uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. America. That's um, Greenwich Mean Time minus 5. If you can't make that time, there's always the Saturday Encore at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all we have for news. So, question of the day, of course, folks. Videos or, mus or art first? Videos or art? Four for art, one for video. We're going with art first, folks. I was hoping to have someone on here to um, tell us about his uh, work in person, but I don't think he's feeling very good, or he's gone, or something. Anyway, hopefully he'll be here next week, or or the week later. Anyway, wrong one. There we go. Who's here? Who's here? Muffinshire's here. Ooh, that's a high time there. <laughs> Twilight is magic. Okay. Why don't we start with... You know, I'm going to start with him since I was going to last week. This, this one's by Citra360 titled The Butterfly's Descent. Rainbow Ash, I intentionally did that. Yeah, whenever... For those of you who haven't been here before, um, whenever we... Whenever I go to the art and mu music... In videos, I always put my camera down because I just don't want my ugly mug getting in the way of everything. It's just silly that way. Anyway, let's focus on the art here, shall we? That's basically about it, Darkst 3. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that, Twilight is Magic. By the way, if you're getting some delay, try refreshing. That might help. Anyway, focusing on the um, pick here. Something that I saw this being made, it, it, you know, in progress. I was at the live stream for a little bit. And it was, people were picking out the neck, the neck positioning, the neck and head positioning and proportions. And, and to be fair, rightfully so. And in my humble opinion, Citra nailed this shot. I was looking at it and I'm just going, you know, how's he going to pull that off? That's a tricky angle to make here. But he made it. He made it work and... I can't get enough of this pick, folks. It is absolutely gorgeous. 
There's the link, of course. Citra's always had an effect for um, on feathers, Muffinshire. Check out some of his other work. To see what I mean. <clears throat> Zot will work. Alright, let's move on. Okay, we'll go with this one. Anyway, this one is Celestia by Murphy Law for me. Once again, we are graced by his amazing pencil skills. Why do I say this this time? The stuff we've had on here before has always ranged in terms of a lighting effect with his with just his pencil drawings. This one I love because it's very bright. He's taken he's basically well done just that. He's we know we've seen his dark effects before and I know I've commented on some lighter pictures like I think he did a Luna pick that was really bright, but this one is just wonderful when it comes to Celestia herself. It's very bright, very colorful. It just works. reading some of the comments here. Alright. Hmm. Okay, we'll go with this one. This one's titled Pokemon's Diamond Beauty Contest by CSI Mad Max. Yeah, it's a good comic, so <laughs> here we go. And now from the poke from the Ponyville and now from Ponyville in the equestrian region, Rarity's Kildeo. What score will our judges give him? Let's find out. <laughs> Son, I am disappointed. Second place? This is outrageous! I don't think there's any pony who's ever felt as ashamed as I'm feeling right now. I just don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> Darn tootin' Twilight is magic. Okay, we'll go with this one. This one is Fight by Ruble Gun. Let's see if I can expand. There we go. Now, based on only what I've um, <laughs> Matt the Shadow Man. Anyway, um, this picture, if I recall from just reading some of the comments correctly. This was a, a Fallout Equestria pick that Rubel Gun did for someone. I could be wrong on this, so bear with me completely if I'm wrong. And Rubel Gun, if you're watching this, if I get it wrong, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, I'm just going to say this one thing about this comic, or comic picture. Neo Eat your heart out. Hmm. No 
No, he's not here. Oh. Okay, let's go with these two. These next two are by Alasso. This first one titled Speed Patrol. Now, remember how I brought this up last last episode? How we would have um, have a uh, continuation. That's what I'm looking for. Continuation on that picture, um, Flutter Cop. Well, this was the one I was referring to. Problem was, is I didn't get the I didn't get the permission slip in time, so I. Um, that's changed, but that's another story. Anyway, this was a follow-up to it, and this is what I was referring to. <laughs> I feel sorry for Scootaloo in this one, folks. You know why? Am I the only one who gets the impression that Dash would have um, Scootaloo on her back with the siren and light going? In other words, all she's there for is just to be the light. <laughs> Matt the Shadow Man, I would love to see that. I would love to see that. <laughs> anyway, moving along. And this next one is titled Fishing with Derpy. Just a really cute picture. I like this one. Though I am... I know I asked this in the comments, but I, I gotta ask it again, folks. Maybe you guys have an idea. Fishing with a muffin. What would give the fish any incentive to bite it? Kandaryu? Yes, we have. Uh... I know for sure once, because that was the first movie I saw on here. But I don't think we've seen it since. And the last time it was was October 7th, 2011. That I'm aware of, okay? I can't stress that enough that I'm aware of. That's a good point, Twilight is Magic. <laughs> moon view. Alasso is a really cute concept. Again, as um, Muffinshire put it, dangerously adorable. Okay. I think we'll go with these next. These next ones are by Vardis Touch. First one titled, Your Bus Stop. Quote, No, she's not a vampire. No, her wings are okay. She just needs some time to think about life and its meaning. That's why by foot and bus. Let's see if I can't get it. There we go. And there's the link. Once again, she, um... Then country song, please leave. Anyway, um... What was it I was going to say? Oh, yeah. The thing I love most about this picture is, of course, she has a great highlight when it comes to coloring. And those eyes in particular, as you are, you're pointing out, Michael, yeah, they stick out wonderfully. I like where she's going with a lot of these. The, this one and the next one, you'll see what I mean. It seems like she's trying to tell some stories in her uh, photos, photos, drawings now, and I like that. Speaking of her next one... This one is titled Rarity. I think this is the first... Nah. Anyway, uh, this is Rarity. This was a commission that she did. There's the link. Yeah, it's just a commission. If I recall right, she said... Um, I'm not going to find my comment. I don't remember what she said about this, but I don't think she's a pirate here. She's just traveling. She's just uh, traveling on a ship. But overall, I the thing that really I like about this is, as I said, this is an interesting um, story, or at least the potential of a story, and it's an interesting idea anyway. 
I'm hoping a certain someone can get something finished with Rarity in the future here. But um, this kind of reminds me of Pi Rarity from by Recky, uh, our our own Rec. For those of you who don't know, anyway, um, that's part of the reason why I like this is because of that Pi Rarity picture of his. Anyway, Vardis Touch, good job on this commission. Okay, for all of you giving me that shipping thing. There you go. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but let's hope you could. <laughs> Just reading some of the lines you guys are throwing. Hmm. Let's see. I think we have only one more comic as I'm looking over this. Nope, we have two. So I'll do this one. This first, this comic is Bath Time by Colt Steel Stallion. This one, I gotta warn you guys, prep your um, defibrillators and your um, AEDs and your insulin because this is a cute one <clears throat> alright Twiley bath time yay <laughs> Matt the Shadow Man. Just rinse the soap off, and we're done. Mr. Ben, go sit in the corner. Bath time. Again. Yay! I always thought this one was just nothing short of adorable. Colt, good job on this one. Okay, we'll go with this one. These next two are by our good friend Vest. This first one titled Yai Yai Yai. Hope I pronounce. I hope I got that title right, Vest. <laughs> anyway, um. Oh, have mercy. Once again, he shows his um, strong side with his coloring. And as he puts it, somehow Daring Do is always sneaking into my pictures here. Anyone else thinking um, someone needs to repair this rickety old bridge? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that, Mr. Ben. Anyway, uh, Vest, I hope there's a story behind this, because that would be awesome. If, you know, if you have one, <laughs> make it happen. That's a good point, Muffinshire. <laughs> no. No, Alex M. Anyway, moving along here. This next one is titled The One That Sneaks Out. Quote, You can hold a tough face for as long as you want, but somehow a little drop of truth will sneak out eventually. Let it. I'm just going to kind of let that one sink in for a minute. <laughs> I 
I really, one thing I will say about this picture is I like the styling he did on Rainbow's mane there. It's different, but I like it. The colors blend very well, and it's just a really Enuk style. <laughs> Reverse bedheaded. Anyway. Oh, one last check. <laughs> Twilight is magic. There is a reason I do have all those kitchen sink jokes. All right, this next one's by Pixel Kitties. These next two, I should say, titled Butt Stallion Revived. Uh, quote, with TrotCon coming up, I decided it was a good time to spend an entire damn night making Crystal Empire rarity. Drawing crystal ponies is ridiculously time-consuming. Anywho, I'll have this and a few more posters at TrotCon. Smaller prints, too, and buttons, and all kinds of other pony products. Hope to see you there. End quote. So if you're going to TrotCon, tell her hi from me. But, um... What was I was going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. Anywho, I like what she did with this, with um, Crystal Rarity there. It's better than her what she did before, and... Um, <laughs> And I especially like the hairstyle. I, I know, you know, the Crystal Empire redid the hair a little bit, but I just like this. I really do. Anywho, this next one, speaking of the Crystal Empire, is titled The Crystal Throne. Quote, if you think this has a happy ending, you're probably right. Another poster for TrotCon and other conventions this year. End quote. Brace myself. The Game of Thrones memes are coming. Anywho, I just like this idea. <laughs> Howdy, Dark92 Enigma. She does have a slight smile there, Matt the Shadow Man, if you can... I'll see if I can. Yeah, see? Anyway, let us move on. Yeah, I'm making good time here. I'm actually quite happy with that. Oh... I think I'll go with this one next. These next two are by a new person, Indiron, or Indiron. I hope I'm pronouncing either one of those correctly. Anyway, these two are portrait shots, human pony portrait shots, and um, and uh, I thought I'd show them. This first one's titled Rainbow Dash, the Ideal Girl. I was a little hesitant to, but I figured that it was safe enough. <laughs> Matt the Shadow Man. Anyway, I really like the way he made... I, I like that he stuck with the rainbow hair. I, I know sometimes when... Um, you know, oftentimes when human eyes, they keep the rainbow hair when it comes to the ponies or they, you know, anything. But I just really like the way he did this form here. Not only that, as I said, the hair coloring did a really good job of it. And in keeping with that, I'm going to sh um, this next one is titled Fluttershy the Spirit of Kindness <laughs> this is 
this one again, I think is just um, <clears throat> yeah. I was that's why I was hesitant to show this Matt the Shadow Man. <laughs> oh, oh well, that's fine. Hold the phone here. Why do the windows always have to pop up over there? Sorry about that. Um, anyway, I really like the eyes on this one, folks. A very innocent looking look and a very... I love the background with this. That pink really helps to highlight her. <laughs> All right. Moving along. Kind of, Matt the Shadow Man. Kind of. But in this respect, it's good. I will say that. Yeah, we'll go with this next. These next two are by our good friend Kaz Tyne. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I saw this and I thought, you know what? This one has to go in. Okay, I'm just reading some of the comments here. Anyway, I really like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's animated. I thought, you know, that's really kind of, that's really cool in this respect. And two, the purple really um, stands out here. I haven't seen Cadence's hair that purple before, but I like that. They should really redesign it around that because I think that looks cool. Quote, I think Cadence is stealing the place as my top favorite pony from Rarity. End quote. <laughs> it's possible, Matt the Shadow Man. Albeit, I will say this. Aren't there British-related uh, cities in uh, Equestria? You know, Trottingham? Or, um... Actually, that's about the only one mentioned. But I suppose we'll um, we'll get to that another day. But anyway, it's possible. I will say that. Okay, uh, this next one anyway is to get the cutest mark of all. And quote: This was to try and see how far I could get in 25 minutes. I didn't get as far as I thought I would. After 25 minutes, I had the line art, base color, and a part of the background. Showed me that it, um, showed me that I needed way more time in chibi paint than I need in open canvas. This entire pick took about 45 minutes. Why do I bring that up? And yeah, canter a lot. Thank you, Matt the Shadow Man. There we go. The reason I wanted to bring this up was because of um, well, for various reasons, but I think the biggest one was just because I think this is just downright adorable. Plus, it doesn't help that Sweetie Belle is my favorite uh, CMC. But I don't hate a good Chibi Pony. And given the um, given how um, actually I don't even know about the success of it. All I'll say is it's a really cute piece, Costine. It's very cute. Cut or lot. It's like you guys are wanting me to sing or something. Hmm. Okay, we'll go with this one next because we're we're all animated today. This these next three are by Death Pony, but two of them are low priority. Anyway, this one is titled Quote 
made and rendered with Blender. I saw this and I just couldn't help but laugh. Just because it's silly. <laughs> Sadly, I thought you guys were going to do that. Anyway, um, the two bits of advertisements I want to do are on... Um, he's having a t-shirt contest. And I'm just showing two of these. Check out his profile for um, the other for the others, and you can vote on which ones you like. Quote: Would you like this picture to be on a shirt? Then please go ahead and vote at that link. Please check out the other designs too. Rating period from May 28th through June 25th of this year. So um, this uh, anyway. I picked um, Mighty Crackle here. And this next one I want to show a little bit called Royal Serenade. Quote, <clears throat> This duo will bring a great calm to the land with the soothing sweet um, sonority, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I think he means serenade, of the flugelhorn. And then, would you like this picture to be on a shirt? Vote there. He's done something... No, he hasn't. But I remember seeing this. Like, he was working on it. Or something. I, I swear I've seen this before, folks. Anyway, um, maybe it's that... Um, that other pick he has of Princess Celestia bowing to Alicorn Pinkie Pie. You know, with the um, party hat and all. Howdy, Saturn. Anyway, um, here's the design. <laughs> and and finally, we have these two by Toxic Mario. This one's just a low-priority one, though. <laughs> he has some new t-shirts available on We Love Fine. Send you those. Quote, Oh, hey, what do we have here? Two new We Love Fine shirts from me. Yeah, I'm going to slowly make the DBZ MLP series into shirts. I can't wait. However, comics and pics are still my top priority as always. Duh. Anyways, back to comics and other stuff. And speaking of which, we do have some comics to, um, some comic, a comic, I'm sorry, to talk about. This one titled Brain Freeze. And here's the last comic. <clears throat> we love a fine. <laughs> Take care, Dark92. <laughs> Matt. Uh, Derpy? What are you doing? Well, I found a horn laying in the middle of the road, so I decided to keep it. Okay, Dark92. I'm... Look forward to it. I look forward to it, actually. There we go. Namer's glue, made for your toughest fixes. Industrial strength, extra strong. So, Dash, how do I look? Well... <laughs> yeah, that's not going to get you alicorn hurt anytime soon, Derpy. <laughs> You know what I'm already imagining, folks? A giant bald spot cut around her head 
as in to get all the hair off. <laughs> Very true, Matt the Shadow Man. <laughs> Alright, you guys ready for the videos? Alright. This first one is by our good friend Vifex, titled Party Cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, Party Cannon by Vifex. I should note it's his 800 sub track, so 800 subscribers. So congratulations on that, Vifex, by the way. Woo! All right. <laughs> Ducks tails. 
Anyway, this next one is titled Warrior by Carbon Maestro. Hold the phone, folks. Sorry about that, folks. Had a minor interruption. All right. This next one is titled Music of My Destiny by Exit Ecstaticus. Love is 
Ladies and gentlemen, Ecstaticus's Music of My Destiny, a song for Vinyl Scratch. <laughs> the Pony Bullet Hell boss theme for Vinyl. Yes, yes, Twilight is Magic. <laughs> Konami make this now. Anyway... So let me check what we have left. That's it. Yeah. We're six minutes early. But I'm okay with that. So, y'all ready for the ponies? <clears throat> Let's get the show on the road. Show you how 
while it's really done. Hey, girls. Hey, Pinkie Pie. Howdy. Just wanted to tell you how happy I am that you can make it to Gummy's party. How are you kidding? I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Me neither. When Pinkie Pie throws a party, I am there. Don't worry, there are plenty of other surprises in there. What kind of surprises? I can't tell you that, silly. Then it wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> this punch is simply divine. Is this the same recipe you used for your spring has sprung party? Nope, something new. It's Gummy's favorite! Woo! This is my jam! Having fun? A blast! You always throw the best parties, Pinkie Pie. Another delightful soiree. It's been lovely. You sure you don't want to stay? There's still some cake left. Uh, I think I'm gonna pass. Great party, though. We should do this again soon. <gasps> we should do this again soon. Pardon me? You said we should have another party soon, and it's soon! Here's your invitation! You're invited to Gummy's after birthday party this afternoon at 3 o'clock. All our bestest friends are invited, and there's gonna be dancing and games and cake and ice cream and punch! This afternoon? As in, this afternoon, this afternoon? Yes, indeed! Oh, gosh. I wish I could make it, but I've gotten a bit behind in my studies. <laughs> Really gotta hit the books. I understand. Your studies come first. But don't worry, we'll be sure to save you some cake. Please do. Oh, and Twilight, you shouldn't hit the books. You should really just read them. I'll keep that in mind. Huh? Oh, hi, Pinkie Pie. What brings you around these parts? Who's ready to shake their hoo thing? It's an invitation to Gummy's after birthday party this afternoon. There's gonna be dancing and games and cake and ice cream and punch. This afternoon? As in this afternoon, this afternoon? That's funny. That's just what Twilight said. And the answer is yes. It's this afternoon. Oh, uh, well, I, I, uh, I don't think I can make it because uh, I have to, uh, uh, you know what? I, uh, pick apples. Yep, apples. Because that's what we do with the apples. We, uh... Pick him. <laughs> Okie dokie dokie. A party is still a party, even if there are only three guests. <sighs> Anything else I can do for you, most beautiful one? <laughs> Perhaps you could take a bath. How do I put this delicately? You smell like a rotten apple core that's been wrapped in moldy hay and dipped in dragon perspiration. <sighs> Ooh, love the new hat. Very modern. What's the occasion? Gummy's after birthday party is this afternoon. I'm delivering the invitations. The party is this afternoon? As in, this afternoon, this afternoon. It's so strange. Every pony keeps saying that. Oh, oh do they? I know it's short notice, but we had such a great time at his birthday party, I thought we could have even more fun at his after-birthday party. And I'm sure that we would, but I'm going to have to decline. I have to wash my hair. Don't be silly. Your hair doesn't look dirty. It doesn't? Nope. See? 
Dirty. I have to go. Huh. No Twilight, no Applejack, no Rarity. Oh well, a party is still a party even with only two guests. This afternoon? As in... Yes! As in this afternoon, this afternoon. Oh man, we'd love to, but we're house-sitting this afternoon. <sighs> Both of you? It's a, a big house. Uh, look at the time. We'd really better get going. Wait! Maybe I can bring you some after-birthday cake and ice cream. Who are you house-sitting for? Harry. Harry? Yeah, I don't think you know him. That's strange. I know just about every pony around here. He's a bear. A bear? Yep, he's a bear, all right. And he'll be pretty upset if we don't get over to his house soon. <laughs> what? There's a bear around here who lives in a house? It's uh, really more of a cave. But he's fixed the place up so much it feels like a house. And uh, he wants us to look after his house, a uh, cave, while well, he's... Uh... At the beach. He's vacationing at the beach? Yep, he loves to... Collect Play seashells. Play volleyball. Play Collect volleyball. Collect seashells. Collect volleyball. Play seashells. Gotta go. Something strange is definitely going on around here, Gummy. Sure, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy had to house it for that vacationing bear, but what are the chances all my other friends would have plans this afternoon, too? Rarity has to wash her hair, Applejack has to pick apples, Twilight is behind on her studies and has to hit the books. The more I think about it, the more those are starting to sound like... <gasps> excuses! I don't think so. Good. I don't want her to know anything about this. Yes, of course. I'll be right back. But we're friends. What wouldn't Twilight want me to know anything about? <gasps> She's coming back. There you go. Thanks. And remember, not a word to Pinkie Pie. Hey, what's with the tin can? sweet shop, did she? I don't think so. Oh, good. I'd hate for her to ruin everything. Me too. believe she was planning on throwing an after-birthday party today? I'm just glad I was able to come up with an excuse for why I couldn't be there. Me too. This is obviously going to be so much better. As long as we keep her from finding out about it, it will. See you later. Every pony loved my parties. Hi, Pinkie Pie. <laughs> uh oh. Rainbow Dad, wait! <sighs> Where are you going?
Oh, uh, howdy, partner. Mind if I take a look inside the barn? No, uh, I mean, yes, I mean, you can't come in here. Rainbow Dash just went in there. Oh, well, she was just bringing in some supplies. Yep, supplies for the renovation. Fixing up the whole thing, top to bottom. Uh, lots of construction going on in there right now. You heard her? Construction! <laughs> Construction. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Okie dokie, Loki. Huh. <sighs> <sighs> Well, I'm gonna know about it. I'm gonna know about it big time. And I know just who's gonna tell me all about it. Tell me all about it big time! Wow, nice spread. It's all yours, Spike. All you have to do is talk. That's it? Oh, you got it. Okay, uh, beautiful weather we're having, eh? I love a sunny spring day, don't you? The birds chirping, the flowers blooming. No, no, no. Talk about our friends. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, there's Twilight Sparkle. She's a unicorn. Good with magic, real brainiac. And then you got Rarity. Total knockout. Twilight seems to think I don't have a chance with her, but eh, what does she know? Let's see. There's there's Fluttershy, a Pegasus afraid of heights. <laughs> What's up with that? No, you're not understanding me. I want you to confess! Confess? Confess! I'm the one who spilled juice all over Twilight's copy of Magical Mysteries and Practical Potions! And? And I'm the one who used up all the hot water in Ponyville yesterday when I took a seven-hour bubble bath! And? And sometimes, when no one's around, I do this. Looking good, Spike! Looking real good! No, no, no! What do you want to hear? Tell me what you want me to say and I'll say it! Tell me that my friends are all lying to me and avoiding me because they don't like my parties and they don't want to be my friends anymore! <sighs> your friends are all lying to you and avoiding you because they don't like your parties and they don't want to be your friends anymore! Pretty rude. Pretty rude? It was downright despicable! It was, wasn't it? If I were you, I wouldn't speak to them ever again. You know what? I'm not gonna speak to them ever again. And I'm not gonna invite them to another party as long as I live! They don't deserve to be invited to my parties. Not after the way they've been acting. Despicable! I'm losers! Yes, that's right. Well done. Yeah, you show up. Who could that be? Hey there. 
there, Pinkie Pie. Sorry I was in such a rush earlier. Had some place to be and couldn't slow down and say hello. You know how it goes. I don't know how it goes, all right. Yeah. So why don't you come with me over to Sweet Apple Acres? No, thanks. I'm spending time with my real friends. Isn't that right, Madame the Flower? Oui, that is correct, Madame. Uh, Pinkie Pie? Another slice of cake, Sir Lancelot? I'd love one. All righty. What do you say we get on out of Creepy Town and head over to Applejack's? She's not going anywhere. I most certainly am not. I'm having a wonderful time right here. You should really just come with me. You heard the lady. She ain't going nowhere, chump. Who you calling a chump, chump? Oh, that's it. Party's over. Come on, Pinkie Pie. No. Pinkie Pie, let's go. I said no. You have to come with me. No. I. Oh, you want to do this the hard way? We'll do this the hard way. We're here. For such a long time, we had to make excuses for why we couldn't attend Gummy's party so that we could get everything ready for yours. If this is a farewell party, why does the cake I picked up from Sugar Cube Corner say, Happy Birthday Pinkie Pie? To any of us. Yes, <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm just glad I haven't been replaced by a bucket of turnips. Huh? You don't want to know. All right, girls, enough of this gabbing. having a great time with my friends, but also was given the opportunity to learn a valuable lesson about friendship. Always expect the best from your friends, and never assume the worst. Rest assured that a good friend always has your best interests at heart. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. You girls wouldn't mind if we celebrated Gummy's after birthday party too, would you? His party was cut short and he's pretty upset about it. Oh, oh it was a party. Oh, oh, yeah, why yeah, not? <laughs> Let's have a party for Gummy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, party of one. So, initial thoughts? <clears throat> 
take note of that, Tox. Excellent. I'll plan on being there. <laughs> non buck giver. <laughs> I have to agree with you on that one, Muffin Shire. <laughs> Yeah, it, people are c throwing it or throwing, giving me these notions of high high end episode, good episode, one of their favorites. Yeah, it's one of mine too. And it's is it really hard to see why, folks? Let's why don't we start there? Let's talk about the episode overall. What is it about this episode that gets you guys um, that uh, makes this one of your guys' favorites? When we get there, Tox, when we get there. Elaborate, Tox, in the sense of, I know what you mean by the pacing, but, you know, can you kind of spell it out for me? Okay, yeah, I would have to agree with you. <laughs> Howdy, Fluttercry. Why don't we discuss that now? Um, hold on. People are saying that the pacing works well, and that too I have to agree with them. It sets the episode up, we introduce the conflict, and yeah, we kind of address this, how it's over something rather silly. Hits its high mark, and we'll be talking about that specifically, probably next, folks. And then it resolves rather nicely. <laughs> I see what's happening. So, where do you guys want to start after... We, we already did the episode overall, at least hearing it from you guys. is What do you guys want to st start with specifically? Okay, why don't we... Um, I'm just kind of reading the chat right now. <laughs> okay, you guys are you guys want to talk about the um the mental breakdown scene. So that's perfect. Let's let's start there. So this is after the um ep the episode break and um after the spikes interview when the episode gets broken for the commercial that scene that's the scene i'm talking about let's discuss that what do you guys have to say about this scene <laughs> Agreed, Twilight is magic. 
<laughs> Makes me cry ever, Tim. Okay, I'll get to my bits here on that scene. Yeah, this scene, I have to admit, came right right out of nowhere. But I think that's part of the reason why it works so well. I wouldn't say it's that, Matt, the Shadow Man. I think it's more akin to... Um, That's about halfway correct. That's what I want to say. And, and here's the reason why I say that. This isn't, um, how do I want to put this? None of her friends said, you know, just, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to go to your party. It came with a sense of, they're not trying, they're trying to, um, they're making up excuses. They're lying to her. So it falls under, imagine, well, imagine being lied to over something that, most of the time they'd say yes to. Uh, remind me, Rainbow Ash. Flutter cry, if we don't keep the chat on topic, we go way, way off. It just gets to be messy. That's why. Unfortunately, that hand has been forced because um, so many times we start, we're trying to run the show and we're off talking about, I don't know, something else. Anyway, um... What Otakon is saying there. Would you kindly light it? No, seriously, Otakon, light it. Yeah, Rainbow Ash, that's something I was going to bring up here on uh, Pinky as a character. I, I do want to... We'll get back to that. I'll probably be moving between the two, um, between Pinky's character development and that's and the breakdown scene here. Um, but let's talk about that scene for a minute here, folks. In my opinion, this comes right out of nowhere. I mean, we know that it's pretty dramatic when Pinky... Um, when Pinky's hair goes flat, you know, just down, out. But um, for her to basically go onto a borderline psychosis episode in a kids show, especially a show intended for um, girls, you know, 6 to 12 year old girl range, that's pretty impressive actually. That's, I have to give the applaud to this episode and the show for doing that. It, as you guys have been pointing out, it shows great character development on Pinky's part. And yeah, you guys are pointing out some good points. It shows how insecure she is, how, well, I guess more than anything, how insecure she is. Huh. 
I wouldn't say that, Matt the Shadow Man. I think it's just more of a visual gag or visual... Um, or something to that effect. But, um, no, I wouldn't say that it's a regression of, of any sort. Like, It's just more of a visual gag. However, there is something I do want to ask you guys. Given that this scene here kind of drops the bomb on um, dark scenes in this show, as we're going to see coming up here, what do you guys have to say about this turn? The reason I ask is because you'd be I've seen a few arguments of people saying, and very rare and few and far in between, let me just point that out right now, but... Um, but, um, what was it I was going to say? What do you think of this dark turn this show just took here? How about we stop trying to diagnose Pinky's um, ailments since none of us sitting here are professional psychiatrists or psychologists and stick to the scene at hand, please. That's a good point, Matt the Shadow Man. I, I do find it a bit dark just because, again, a mental breakdown of this nature, oh, look, some drop frames, a mental breakdown of this nature is both dark, but it's also a good mature, so it's, and yeah, we'll talk, get to that in a sec, Rain, uh, rain Shadow. Agreed, Alex M. You make a good point there, Jay Malamute. Yeah, but you have to understand, Rainbow Ash, Ren and Stimpy was originally designed for adults. Or at least, if you're... It's... Yeah, never mind. I've seen a few arguments that people don't like this dark turn that the show took with this episode. Or at least in the sense of just the dark turn overall. And... Personally, I do have to disagree with that. The reason being is because these dark scenes, and yes, I'm just going to use dark scenes just as an umbrella term, but um, as a, as a, from a storytelling perspective, these dark scenes can be really great because they can show just how far a character falls. As we saw in here, while, yeah, I do agree that in some respects, I think this scene was just used for funny in some respects, I also see it as a very serious nature, in a very serious sense that this is how far Pinky has uh, fallen into what can only be described as um, her insanity. And as such, from a both, I should say, a storytelling and a visual perspective, it's played perfectly. Imagine trying now to work this scene around without... Um, Trying to work this story out by avoiding that. What would you have?
Actually, that was all I had on Pinky and the scene itself. There is something I do want to put point out here when it comes to the other five. Did you notice how they're all willing to go behind Pinky's back in order to make her surprise party happen? The reason I bring this up is because we're going to be talking about this in the future, and I, I just figured it was worth noting that um, that her friends are willing to work behind Pinky's back in order to make something happen. We've seen this before in, say, Season 1, Episode 10, and we'll see it in Season 2 when we get there. And in this case, was it not necessary, Shizu? Because if they would have, you know, they were already lying to her, how are they, you know, I, I just asked, how are they supposed to work around that? Yeah, Rain Shadow. Just reading the ch ch uh, the, uh, the chat here. And that's a bad thing, Shizu? At least in the sense of, I'll say, in this episode. I don't think so, Mr. Ben. But that's part of where the that's part of where the comedic aspect falls into play. Plus, if anything, on the serious note, think about it. She, um, she basically, you know, ignores all her friends. She says, you know, I'm not going to this party. I have my real friends here, Madame Lafleur and Rocky and etc. etc. And when she realizes how wrong she was, how, well, wrong she was, she realizes, I screwed up. But, she springs back to normal. And again, have we not had those cases? Has, has Have all of you not had a moment where you felt like you've gone just about over the edge, only to realize how wrong and foolish you were? And when everything is resolved, you say, boy, I feel stupid, but at least it worked out in the end. You know, as Scrubs, there's an episode of Scrubs, I can't remember the name of the episode, but that's basically how it works in this, in one of the episodes. Um, it was the one where, the day just before Turk and Carla's wedding, and um, Turk's kind of in a hissy fit because everything about the wedding is for, is um, Carla is basically building the whole wedding. She has absolutely no input for Turk when he realizes she actually was building some things for him, like a big screen TV so he could watch the playoff games at the reception, 
he realizes again how foolish he was and basically was safe from going over the edge. But there's a difference between a dependency issue and um, anger, Rain Shadow. That's the that's the thing I I have to say. And I don't think Pinkie Pie has um, is clingy. I think it's just again, it, it, it's a sense of treachery, not um, not an anxiety disorder. Which stole it from another show. Which stole it from another show. Which stole it from the basic. Uh, which stole it from Human Nature Darks 3. The only reason I used Scrubs was because it was the most vivid example I could think of. Well, you can't have a party with just one person, Rain Shadow. Take care, Alien Warhead. Now, yes, let me just point out that there, um, there's also a difference between a, um, clinging, being clingy and um, as a disorder and just being a more um, social person. Yes, Pinkie Pie might like to be surrounded by friends, but I just want to make it perfectly clear that there's a difference between um, wanting, wanting to be surrounded by friends and needing it because you have an anxiety disorder concerning it. I would agree, Rain Shadow. I don't think this is necessarily a see the best in everyone. Again, I personally find I find this more under the case of treachery. She, uh, Pinky feels betrayed, so she abandons them, and you know she's still angry, but only when she realizes that you know. I was wrong, does she um, reconcile? Just reading the chat here, folks. <laughs> Mr. Ben. That too, Alchemist. And that's that's my point, is um, she thinks they left her, not she left them. That's my whole point. Agreed, Mr. Ben. But even not even from Pinky's sense, from other senses, or perspectives I'll use for clarification. Take care, crazy.
we kind of already went over that two episodes ago. Uh, Darks, Darks 3 and Twilight. But I, I guess it is worth noting. Okay, if that's all you're going to say about it. Now I'm going to say this. I do think we are looking a bit too far into this, folks. I really do. You're, I say this under the notion of you're trying to apply um, real-world human issues and problems into a TV show. Well, it's certainly, we've d gone over the notion of... Um, of uh, you know, we've already gone over the notion of the dark scene. I think now we're just looking into... Um, I think now we're just reaching. I really do, uh, Rain Shadow. I really do. We present. We, we, how do I want to put this? If anything, we're just repeating ourselves. In terms of notes, that's about all I have left, believe it or not, folks. All right, Matt the Shadow Man, let's, let's discuss that. Uh, yes, talks? Elaborate, Toxic, please. <laughs> that I do have to agree with a bit, Twilight is Magic. Technically, they were constructing things. And am I the only one around here who thinks that she's not... Um, the other four aren't constructing anything? They're trying to reenact a war scene? What points do you have on that, Tox? Okay, but again, well, part of the reason I'm... I don't want to put this... We're constantly going through these points as we keep going down these lists, but I am interested in what you have to say about this. <laughs> the, 
That I agree to. And again, we'll get there when we get there. I have a lot to, a lot of good things to say about her when we get there, Tox. And that's the nice thing about this show, Tox, is it, it's amazing some of the character development we see with these characters. And again, we'll discuss those when we get to those episodes, but I do have to agree with you easily on how um, there's a, there are a lot more deeper sides to these characters. It's, why do you think I'm doing this? That's half the reason I'm doing this. I can only imagine, Tox. I'm... We're just talking about Pinky's character, Alchemist. Agreed, Matt the Shadow Man. There's a reason for that Darkst 3. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I agree with on that rainbow rain rain shadow, sorry. Well, that's true, Mr. Ben. All right, I think I think it's time to wrap this up, folks. I'm going to give my thoughts on the episode overall. We'll get there when we get there, Matt the Shadow Man. After we get done with all of the Season 1 episodes, I kind of want to... I, I, not kind of, we will. I want to take an episode of BWB and just discuss the entirety of Season 1. Discuss what was good, what was bad, what we liked, what we didn't like, characters, you know, the whole jazz. So we'll get there when we get there.
So for all of you talking about, you know, these character developments and stuff, you know, that's great that we're doing it here. I don't mind that. But, um, take care, Oticon. Anyway, um, we'll get there when we get there. So I want to do some more just discussion episodes after these episode reviews after season one. But again, we'll get there when we get there. For now, let's wrap this up. As everyone here has been saying, is it really that hard to see why this episode is loved so much? For crying out loud, it was number six on the We Heart Ponies fan favorite marathon. You know, the one where everyone voted. Number six. That's pretty impressive. Oh, sorry, Oticon. But that's still pretty darn impressive. That, um, I almost find that that's undercutting it. You'd think it would be in the top five somewhere. But, um, but I guess I'm not going there. We'll get there. We'll get to the ne episode one and stuff when we get there and all that fun jazz. I said, I'm sorry, Otakon. I acknowledge that you weren't leaving. Oh, everyone else. I'm sorry. This, as I've, as we've been stating, this episode has took a really dark turn for the series. And in my humble opinion, I'm glad it did that. I don't know why people think that's a bad thing. As we, as I said, it shows how, um, from both a visual and a storytelling perspective, it can tell a lot. And in my humble opinion, this episode and taking that dark turn showed a lot of good stuff. You know, as we've been discussing mostly in Pinky's character, nothing short of fantastic stuff here. And there is a for those of you who have the newsletter from Brony State, I have to I have to reiterate something from it. Quote This episode helped put the show on the map. I believe that. What do you guys think? Okay, agreed. <laughs> that I agree with, Mr. Ben, that it's one of the most notable. I don't know if I call it the best, but I think that's just a subject. That's just, that's a little too subjective. Yeah, for me, this is my number two. This is in fights with um, Green Isn't Your Color and Feeling Pinky Keen as my fi uh, number two spots on favorites for season one. But, um, but it still just can't beat Dog and Pony Show. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up, folks. Next week, I'm planning an interview. I have it all but confirmed at this point. I have a hard time believing they'll say no. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll bring it back up. We also have our Twitter page and Facebook account. Don't forget to find those. Find, the, find it on our website under the Contact Us. We'll be getting the YouTube. Oh, wait, it's already up there. Check them out. And with that, I want to thank you all for stopping by for Babble with Bronies. I am Everlasting Joy, my co-workers, Mr. Ben and Twilight is Magic. We want to thank you for stopping by. Hope to see you here next week. Bring your questions. Sure to be a, It's sure to be a good one. And with that, Farewell.